then life happens. Mm. You know, I got shot and the whole thing changed. One night, uh, there was nothing that said, no, you can't do this. There's a purpose why you're still alive. And immediately I shifted my mind that night. I didn't allow my disability to define me at all. And I don't want any person who has a disability to allow the situation to take control. It's not mm. easy, I must tell you, but it's doable. Yeah, it's doable as long as you put your mind in it. Welcome to another edition of Mindset Profits. I, I do honestly believe I have the coolest job in the world because I go around the country coaching entrepreneurs in different programs. I say I'm privileged to get to do this job because each and, e each and every time you meet different people, different experiences, but every now and then I get to meet other entrepreneurs that inspire even me, that challenge even me and my life. I was in one coaching session with Fetola and SAP. The crew here will recognize because we sh we're just coming off a session now uh, at the Capital Hotel. And I'm sitting with Pravik, Victor, who is one of those entrepreneurs. Pravik, welcome to the podcast. Ah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so he told me his story a while back, how he got shot, how he was on a different tra career trajectory. And when I heard it, I was touched to the point that I started thinking about other entrepreneurs going through similar challenges. Challenges of loss, financial loss, challenges of loss in their personal lives through losing a loved one in the family, going through divorce. Other challenges, I had an entrepreneur who was losing his hearing and it was really not sitting well with him and he was struggling to process what was going on in his life and when I was looking at these challenges, I was thinking how sad it would be for this business that's doing so well to struggle and collapse when the business is fine. Struggle and collapse because the entrepreneur went through personal challenges which they couldn't process, which they didn't get help on how to process. So Pravik got shot and that is something it led him to be on a wheelchair and it's something that many people struggle to process and I, he decided as well to say I will come, I will talk to the people. <laughs> <laughs> Pravik, maybe let me go, not jump too much into the story and give you an opportunity to, to tell it. Someone was asking why I was, call, I was calling you, you know what I said? Yeah. I said, if I were to summarize in one statement, I'd say Bravik got shot and became a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> so he got a bullet and he decided, oh, you know what, let me make millions. <laughs> no, I'm telling you. <laughs> but yeah, how are you? Maybe you can just summarize a bit about yourself, what you do, and then we'll get into what happened and how, how you processed it. Okay. No, thank you, Tando. Um, um, thank you for inviting me here today. Uh, you know, before I get into that, uh, the first time that I met you yeah. it was when we have a session with uh, Sida yeah. uh, the, uh, in Johannesburg. Uh -huh. yeah, we were, I was one of the entrepreneurs who were selected, actually, mm -hmm. uh, to be in that program, and uh, you were the mentor. And I, I told myself when you were presenting there to say, this guy, this guy, if he can be my mentor. Because what you were saying at that time, you know, mm. uh, there's one thing that I took in that session. Uh, it was, you were talking about uh, succession planning. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So for me, succession planning, it was a no in my business, you know, because I had that mentality of if I, uh, I mean, yeah, delegate okay. something yeah. to someone, they won't be doing what, you know, I, I they want to do. They won't do it as well as you. Exactly, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll give the work to that person, but also keep on monitoring 
because I'm not sure whether they will do the way I want it. So that's one thing that I took on that uh, uh, session. session, yeah. Uh, then uh, fast forward, uh, uh, what happened uh, in, in my life, uh, actually I was a paramedic uh, uh, from Davidton, you know, mm -hmm. and at around 19 years or so, I started working as a fireman, paramedic. Then life happens. Mm. You know, I got shot and the whole thing changed. This was an accident? It was, yeah, it's, a, it's like a stray bullet, kind of, because uh, that person who shot me, uh, he was like maybe kind of playing with a gun or so, you know, and uh, uh, I don't know what actually happened at that time, but I just, I was in a car actually, you know, the rest is history. I was in hospital, then after that, my guys, the colleagues yeah. that I used to work with in the East End, they were the one who transported me to hospital. Mm -hmm. And I stayed, I think, in ICU around five days or so. And my family at that time, they were like saying, ah, maybe he won't come back, you know, at that mm. time. Because when they think of that, you know, it's like they were giving up, uh, checking on my status situation in the hospital that, I mean, he can't wake up, he can't even do anything, meaning he's gone, you know. You but, got to be in a coma at some point, or you were awake, you just couldn't move? Uh, I, I, I didn't see anything at that time. because <laughs> well, I didn't You even don't remember that it, it means I was in a coma, I don't know, because I didn't even recognize whoever was coming in that room. Mm. But after five days or so, that's where I started uh, being awake. Okay. You know? And everybody was happy that time. Uh, is, At least coming to life, you know, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I stayed in hospital and six months in the East Rent. It's a far East Rent, mm -hmm. and six months in uh, Natal Spirit. So when we combine, it's twelve months. That's how I reversed my life. Sure. You know? So it was bad uh, because. Uh, you don't know what's happening. You don't know with your career now, you are in hospital. Then finally I got discharged. Uh, obviously, uh, they, they told me, no, you must keep on exercising. You know, the doctor cannot tell you the straight answer. Keep on exercising, you know, um. maybe the progress will be there. You know, so I had that hope. But for me, even though uh, on uh, weekends, we get the pass out and go and visit home. First time when I was visiting home, I didn't want to like go out. I was like staying in my room. Like, no, I don't want anybody to see me, you know, because now I'm sitting on this chair. I cannot do a lot of things that I, 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 I used to do. Um. But when I got discharged after 12 months, you know, uh, okay, before I get into that, because there were some things happened within during that period. That period yes, because I'm period. actually wondering that yes. during that year, that one year, the six months combined, yes. two six months spells, mm -hmm. how, what mental space were you in during that time? Yeah, you know, uh, I had two friends who, who were admitted together uh, in the ward. Yeah. And uh, both of them passed on. Mm. In the, and it traumatized me, you know, it traumatized me. The, it was, they were admitted due to assaults as well, you know, and gunshot because it was the same word. Uh, then for me, seeing them going, <laughs> I was like, I'm the, the next I'm man. Next. <laughs> yeah, and you know, with all these things, you know, stress and everything, they, they, I, I think I wanted to commit suicide, honestly, mm. because I thought now I'm useless, I won't be doing anything, you know. Then I was like, no, what, how can I do this? Suicide? Yeah, how can I do this? <laughs> then I came up with a plan. 
No one knows that, you know. I'm now <laughs> revealing these secrets now. Um, I said, when the nurses come and give me the tablets, because they were allowing us, they would give you, said, no, I, I'll take it after 30 minutes or so, or after it. Mm. Then my plan was to collect oh. the tablets, as and when they give, then hide them. When they come, they will think, I, no, he I drank. took them. Yeah. Up until they are full, then I can consume at once. But there was one night where, I don't know, I'm a Christian, by the way. Yeah, yeah and I believe uh, solely on God. In God, yeah. Yeah. One night, uh, there was that thing that said, no, you can't do this. There's a purpose why you're still alive. And immediately I shifted my mind that night. The following day, I was like, yeah, no, I want to go home and, you know, things will be well. <laughs> yeah. Then fast forward, I got this, uh, discharged, went back home. Now I have to restructure and start again with my career. Because I cannot be extinguishing fire, I cannot be driving ambulances, you know, all those things. Because I used to drive, you know. Ambulances, yes, fighting and, fires. And so that career path was out it of was the question like now. And, and at that time, I was very young. I didn't, uh, uh, 19, you said you were 19, uh, 1920. 20, yes, there. So I was like, now things have shifted, you know. And I was a contract, unfortunately, that time when I was working. Oh, in so they were not yes, going to yeah, keep you. you know, they were not going to keep me. It's like a probation kind of, you know. So I had to change the career completely. I started afresh going to do learnerships. Mm. That's why I said, no, it's fine. I'll go and start afresh and do the learnership side. Did the website development, you know, I was in the IT field. Then um, I went to be recruited by a Business Connection in conjunction with Sasol. Uh, so that's where I was doing my learnership. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> You know, it wasn't easy because at that time I don't even have transport. I solely depend on friends if they're there or I must use taxis. And with taxis, at that time it was not easy because when you go there, they want you to pay for a chair as well. Some of them, not all of them, mm -hmm. but some of them, no, but your wheelchair need to... It will be there and somebody must sit there and it's taking two spaces. I was like, but I mean, really now, must I leave my chair out and what will you I use, say, you know? Yeah. How uh, will you get to their chair? Exactly. But at that time, I had to do it because I need to move with life. I can't be a burden to my family, you know. Uh, it was uh, like traveling. Now and then traveling, 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 up until... Uh, I had a meeting with uh, my family to say, you know, I think now I need to grow and move. Now I'm mm. getting news of this life. I need to like move and go and do some other things. But at that time already I, I was starting to get some like offers, you know, uh, you can come and do a uh, learnership, internship and whatnot. Uh, then I say, I'm relocating, I've got an opportunity in Johannesburg. And they were like, what are you talking about now? And relocating alone? Yeah, are you relocating for real now? I said, yeah, I'm relocating, I have to go and this is my future. I cannot be a burden to you, you looking at me like this and not doing anything. Yeah. I'll die, I'll mm. die in here. So leave me, then you'll go and see where... I stay, you know. So I had to move, go to uh, make some calls with uh, some friend of mine to say uh, get some space where I can go and relocate near to where I'm getting this opportunity, you know. So I went to, I got a place in Soweto, in Rockville, because in Soweto you just catch one taxi to Jobek. It's simple. Yeah. And the East End where you'll take, two. you know, two taxis or mm -hmm. three. And it, it wasn't easy. 
Then we got a place, then my friend arranged everything. We went there and go and check, and it was a wheelchair friendly, everything was okay. And to say, no, this, I'm doing this. I'm doing, I'm taking a decision. I'm doing this. And you I, moved there alone? Yeah, I went there with my friend accompanying me. Then I had to go check, and he had to go in for my family so that they can come and see as well where I stay. They came and see. They were like starting to be happy now. They said, oh, okay, no, it's a good place, and you know, people are okay here. It's, it was a kind of an organization, you know. So I went, then life started uh, now moving. Went to do uh, that leadership, I continued uh, for 12 months. And I saw an opportunity, it was the Department of Health also, they, were, they, they had some advert, I had to apply there, and they called me for an interview while I was in, <laughs> in the leadership team. I went there, they were happy with me to say, no, with your experience of this firefighting and the ambulance mm -hmm. thing, you can come and do our health and what, what. I was like, hey, it's in, it looks like it's an opportunity. Yeah, let's see your certificate and whatnot. And I gave it to them. Mm -hmm. you, you can do internship. And I went there. Fast forward, uh, they said, no, uh, we are taking you. Then I had to arrange that I must finish this because it was like almost done with the leadership. And I had to go and tell them, said, no, you are finishing now so that you can get your qualification as well. Then you go there and move. Finished, went there, the building before it bent. You know, the building in Johannesburg. The, build, yeah. the uh, Department of Health combined with housing. Yes, that building, I was working there. I went there, people were fine. Like now, I was starting to be independent now, you know, uh, doing my, 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 my things by my own, you know, not depending on people. On people. Yeah, because yeah, people would like to come and help, and, you know, but I'll, I preferred to do my things like uh, by myself. When the. Why, why do you think that is so, though? Uh, that you prefer not to be helped by people if people are coming to help does it make you feel different yeah you know uh, when, when i got injured i started to learn more about disability and studied more and i have realized that people have a stigma you know regarding uh, disability okay some will be ashamed you know to see same some will say shame you know and that that's the, not the way that we we really want to, to hear you know if you are saying shame you are feeling pity for me as if there's something wrong with me you know so i'll tell the people no thank you i'll push myself <laughs> you know, thank you i'll push myself yeah and there's just a lot that we need to do regarding uh, disabled issues you know because people, they think when you are disabled, you cannot do anything, you need some assistance, you must go with somebody to the shops or where, wherever you need to go. Because I remember me boarding the taxi to, from Rockville to uh, Gandhi Square. Yeah. When I arrived there, uh, uh, because I was traveling from Soweto to Rosbank with a taxi, yeah. the sas all there. When I arrived there, you know, the taxi conductors. Yeah. The taxi conductor. At the they, public yeah, ranks. Yeah, public ranks. Then he was pushing myself. Then I went there. I want to board a taxi there. Then he asked me, uh, who are you with? You know, <laughs> who's accompanying you? I was like looking at him like this. I said, I'm alone. He said, uh, am I supposed to be with somebody? I'm asking him now. <laughs> Am I supposed to be with somebody? No, I'm asking you alone. And, and, and then I said to him, uh, who did you come with today? Yeah, at work. I said, I came alone. So you want me to come with somebody while you came alone? Uh, what is the difference? You know? I said, uh, oh, okay. Okay, but who, who, will, who will help you get into it? I said, you. Please, please help me. <laughs> <laughs> Please help me get into the taxi. I said, uh, oh, okay, okay. Okay, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna. From that day, yeah. I think I did an awareness on him because he was like, I must be having somebody who accompanies me, who put me in a taxi and whatnot. You know, I must 
pay that person or I don't know mm. what was this. But I didn't get so angry with it. learned that you actually want that feeling of I can do things for myself. Yes. I'm not totally dependent. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So I just wanted to, 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 to show him that, uh, you know, I don't need anybody. I can do this myself. You can fold the wheelchair. I'll show you where to put it, how to fold it. I'll show you. Then you put it. Simple. We became friends from that day. <laughs> <laughs> when you see me coming there, pushing myself, say, damn, come on. Oh, sorry. There's a queue there, eh? yeah. but you'll say, no, don't queue, come, come straight. Then you help me, put me in the take. So we become best yeah, you're friends. You're going to be VIP. That's yeah. powerful. Yeah, yeah. I think what, what I want to ask you is, what message do you have for two people? Because I keep going back to you in that hospital bed, coming up with the strategy of, let me pile up these pills. If someone watches this and they are feeling exactly like that, that life is so bad that I need to be compiling up these bills or to go and buy them if they are in a place where they can, they are strategizing suicide. What message would you be having for them? The second, I guess, would be for people who are either living with people who have a disability or who have friends who have disability, what should they be sensitive to? Yeah, you know, with my colleagues or my team or my family who have a disability, this is not the end. You know, I normally say or tell people that uh, my condition is not my conclusion. Mm. You know, you cannot look at me and conclude now and say, oh, I, I, I love telling people that if you want to challenge me, let challenge me mentally, not physically, mm. because maybe you can beat me there. <laughs> but let's sit in the room and have a conversation, you know. Um, I know how it is when you first encounter a disability. Or oh, how it feels. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I know how it feels. You want to commit suicide. You think life is there. And like it happened to me. Mm -hmm. But you need to change your mindset. You know, the moment you change your mindset that this thing is doable. And if you haven't seen anybody who has a disability making it in life, you'll think there's nothing happening. <laughs> There's nothing happening. But as and when you get to know people, you meet people, oh, they will tell you that, hey, this is doable. Eh? Mm. This, you can do this thing. You can don't. You know, I've, I've helped a lot of people who wanted to commit suicide. Will call me and say, hey, but, you know, I cannot. I'm on a wheelchair. Yeah, I can't do the things I used to, to do. do. I cannot jump. You know, I cannot. I mean, what, what do you want to jump? To where? <laughs> you know? Because as we speak now, it, there are some things that I cannot do, but mm. you can do. I can mm. request you to do, to say, please do this for me. Funny as you're saying that, I'm also thinking there are some things that you can do yeah, that I can't do. <laughs> precisely so, you know. Because uh, uh, we sometimes isolate it to just a few physical things, but we don't realize that you've learned so much about business to generate all the revenue that you generate and... People can learn from that. Yes. And I, I normally say to, to uh, my family that, you know, I, I think this is uh, uh, maybe it was God plan because what I've achieved now compared to what I had. What you prior, had planned. Yes, what I had planned that time. I don't think I would have achieved if this thing did didn't happen. happen. Yeah. Yeah, because so I was right to say the bullet changed your life. Ah, uh, well, you it, it made, made you it, ahead. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. took you levels. Yes, uh, because in Tando at that time, ne, I only had these qualifications for as a paramedic. Mm. I'll tell you, but from that time, uh, I, I studied. I, I studied. I went to do my. A diploma, I went to do my degree, I went to do my honors, I did my uh, uh, master's degree, you know, and now mm. I, I'm, I'm registered, I'm doing my PhD as we speak now, yeah. you know, so, <laughs> so um, I don't think I would have done that because my focus was only on work, 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 you know, but mm. the mind just shifted to, so I need to study, you know. 
I need to study. And I had, the, the, the business was in me because at home, when we grow up, our parents used to sell and will teach us how to sell. Mm. And from that time, I, I, I was selling at school, selling sweets, and, and it got into my adrenaline that mm. I continued. I never looked back. I never looked back. And Once you started selling, you started selling, you just... I, I continued selling sweets, and I was like, working is no longer for me. I've just checked to say, but I mean, when I compare work, because, because I've worked, Mm. You know, and I've had a business. When I compare the two, I, I've just realized work is not for me. You know, mm. business is, is, is really for me. And when, with my studies as well, mm. oh, it, it, it's business. Because with my uh, focus on PhD, mm -hmm. I'm focusing on manufacturing. You know, that's nearly business, you know. So what I'm trying so to say So you really is, did not allow this to stop you? Mm. Not at all. I didn't allow my disability to define me at all. And I don't want any person who has a disability to allow the situation to take control, you know, because this is doable. You can live a, a, a life that you, you didn't manage, you you think did, of. You, yeah. can, you, can, you can have it. You know, even more than a person who says, uh, there are people who say they, are, they, they call themselves, they are normal. I don't know what is normal. <laughs> We are normal. Who, what, what's normal? Uh, so we have a disability. We, we are not normal. I don't know. Uh, so that's a, you know, funny. A friend of mine was saying a similar thing when I was telling her about you. She was saying he he is on a wheelchair. Yeah. And he's making the millions, and you find someone judging and feeling sorry and not realizing, but he's generating these millions. From the wheelchair, well, now you're walking. <laughs> exactly. How much? Uh, how much are you making? <laughs> true that. True that. You know. True that. And uh, people, because they don't know you. Uh, I remember at, at 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 one point, I was at the mall, and some guy, uh, he came and said, "Hey, hey, hey, hey Rodman, can I push you in?" <laughs> uh, you know. I said, ah, no, don't worry. I said, ah, no, man. Yeah. Yeah, but I was from the pick, uh, parking lot, then into the malls. And surprisingly, you know, in business, this is life, you know. Uh, surprisingly, when we got some contract in business mm -hmm. and we, were, we advertised to say we want to employ, uh, you know, people. Yeah. And we had... Uh, you were running were interviews. Interviews. I saw the guy in there, you know, and he was like, huh? shocked. <laughs> and then this guy, okay. so you don't know a person is there on the panel and you're on the other side. What, what is it? What is the problem with that one? <laughs> Only later on when he find out that, hey, that's a boss. <laughs> so you see, he might meet me the more and take me for like, ah, but, at some point, you don't know where life will lead you to. You yeah. know? So these are some things that you need to respect anybody that you meet. You'll never know. I'm curious, though, did it work well for him, the fact that at least he had tried to help you? Yeah, <laughs> it worked well because we we're really looking for a lot of people. We we're looking for more than 150 people. So it really really worked for him so he was in he was like grateful as well you know you got the job uh boss i think with with him uh he was like you know uh, i don't know maybe it was god who said i must go and Offer. help this guy you know i don't know i'm in now but you know things really happen mysteriously you know so he was in and he's a guy who respect mm. i think from his uh, Family, they taught him well, you know. Okay. So uh, that's why I want to bring you... this into you that life mm. can 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 be something else. You need to respect it. Mm. No, uh, thank you for that. W what should people be sensitive to when it comes to just be and being with someone in your life who has a disability? Yeah, there are a lot of things that I normally do awarenesses, you yeah. know, to just uh, sensitize people uh, to do awarenesses 
of what we we uh, collectively don't like there are ways that people just use you know and they are not aware you cannot blame them they will say victor is wheelchair bound and mm. i'll say i'm not bound in this wheelchair somebody who's bound <laughs> in a wheelchair sleep with it's it it's got strength yeah and sleep Ooh. with it i don't sleep with the, this wheelchair i don't get into the car with this wheelchair I'm, you know it, it, it i use it as a mobility to take me from point A to B. Mm, so those words lend differently to you. Yes, to like to the disability sector. Mm. You know, you cannot some t say somebody is wheelchair bound. You know, uh, maybe say uh, he's got a disability. You know, he's using a wheelchair because mm. obviously something yeah, that you're I using use. It. Yes, yes, yes. So those words they are, they are very sensitive. Very sensitive words. And don't come and say, shame, you know, shame. I'm not sick. I mean, I'm not sick. You can see me. I'm fresh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm not <laughs> sick. Uh, it's, a, it's a situation. It happened. And I've accepted it. You know, uh, I'm living a full life now like everybody else, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I live a life that um, most people come and attest to me that you are doing things that we cannot do. But we, we walk. We walk. Honestly, we, we, we are amazing. That's because you need to get, get the feedback from people. You know, you cannot uh, just take uh, that information and tell people. But as a, as and when you get feedback, you consume and say, "What is it that I'm doing differently?" Mm. Because why? I've changed my mindset. You know, and people will come when uh, at the mall when about to get out into the car, they will ask, how do you drive? You know, how do you drive? I say, I use hands. I don't use my legs, they're not working. Hands, can't you? <laughs> I say, come, let me show you so that you learn. You know, at least today you have learned something. <laughs> <laughs> so it's that thing, you know, you do awarenesses. Wherever you go, you know, you will do awarenesses. Are you are you are you by yourself? Yeah, are you? I don't know hey, very much. So and I'm very happy. You know, I'm doing things by myself. Hey, people offer to help. I say, I, you know, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just fine. I have a couple of tough questions for you. Yeah. Number one is on forgiveness. When someone goes through something that you went through, someone is playing with a gun and they shoot you by mistake there's an element of anger and resentment that you have towards that specific person. Mm -hmm. For you, how did you forgive them and move on to be this person? Because you can get so trapped in resentment and anger that you really struggle to move on. Yeah, I think with me, I was just fortunate because my family are praying people, you know, they, are, they believe mostly in God, you know. so. They were the ones who said, forgive. Before I can say it myself, said, forgive. Because I was thinking they would be fighting to say, no, this is happening to my him. kids, you know, let's find this person and what. Let's forgive. The Bible says, I was like, yo, he's talking about the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, this is the Bible says, we must forgive. I forgive. Like this, you know. But I had to consume that, you know, I had to take it and, and you know, take it, but it wasn't easy, but I had to take it and accept that this is the situation. I cannot do anything bad, you know, that will cause more problems and, you know, find myself in, a, in trouble. Mm. So I had to accept, but what I can say, it wasn't easy at that mm. moment in time. It was not easy at all. But I accepted it, I have forgiven the person, and life uh, uh, went on. Have you ever talked to the person? Since? Yeah, uh, we, we, we spoke, and if in fact uh, I hear that he came and he acknowledged that this is what he did, and it wasn't uh, the intention for him to do that, you know, and uh, you know, but my, my uncles, oh, they were the ones that said, what? <laughs> forgiveness? What is forgiveness? Forgiveness. You'll make him uh, walk again. This guy, you are saying forgiveness. Then my parents, you know, my parents were saying, no, 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 wait. Forgive. Wait, please forgive. 
then they ah yo 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 you are forgiving this person but finally they they, they they agreed and i said no it's fine let's let's forgive and move on with life you know I, thank you for that one what about with god and your faith what made you not lose your faith in two ways there is the possibility where you say but i've been a christian all these years why is this happening to me and then just lose your faith there but then there's the other side this one is i don't know if it's funny or what but you'll tell me what <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like to you where because you've been in the faith for so long and you've seen so many stories of healing and you then think okay i'm going to look around for the healing <laughs> <laughs> you you want me to reveal the secret now you, you know uh, what, what was that process for, like for you yeah you know honestly uh, uh as uh, the, the culture I can say that yeah. there are those people who will say you know well, can we take you to pastor that... ban ban you know mm. they will go and pray for you and as you know you get confused because eh, but i'm praying and god i mean why me yeah. you know the question was why me then there was one person who said to mm. me and that day i changed said you know victor yeah. This happened to you because uh, God realized that you are strong and you'll cope with this situation. Otherwise, it would have happened to somebody, somebody got died and said commit suicide. But it happened to you because there was that realization that you are strong, you're going to take it, you are going to maneuver in life, you know. So I took it, you know, and acted upon it to say, I mean, if it's me, and my parents and my family are looking upon me. So I had to take this pill, you know, and chow it and swallow it and move on, move on with life. And I still want to see them, to see, I want them to see me prospering also in life, you know. So it changed that mindset of like trying to blame God and I got me and why oh, not So you somebody. stopped looking for the other prophets? I stopped looking, I didn't even wanted to entertain because there were people who were coming to say hey somebody will pray for you there's miracle that side there's what's happening <laughs> that side i was like if god want to heal me as I'm, i have faith and i pray you know god will do that but now i'm focusing on revitalizing my life again because now it's like now you are starting you, from grade A, A now, from mm, grade 12. You are That's, learning how to live exactly. this way. Exactly. You know, so with me, I can say in life I've le lived twice. <laughs> I've lived twice. So you can uh, compare to say Victor lived twice, and mm. but he's, he's here. He's here. What happened? It's, it's, it's grace. You know, we're talking about grace, grace. today. <laughs> so it's grace. You know, it's the grace of God who made me to be who I am today. Uh, if it was me only, I wouldn't make it at all, you know, because I don't have that uh, intelligence in me, but God, you know, he's the one who, who, who makes things happen. When they say look at the positive side of everything, do you see advantages that came with being on the wheelchair for you? Almost Besides definitely. the money, yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely, there were a lot of lot of advantages, you know, and with with our country, and uh, not only our country, because yeah. you know the the policies were from the UN Convention, Convention and South African policies, the Constitution, they 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 really in favor of. Uh, people with, people disability. with disability, you know, it's up to us. How do we go there and grab and make sure that they implement these policies? Because the policies go there and sit and get not implemented because people will come and shame to say, no, but we can't find them. Oh, yeah, that's what the report we're getting now. We cannot find people with disabilities who can do who this can job. do one, two, three. We don't have people with disabilities who are qualified for this, you know. And we are here, Doctor. you know. <laughs> that's all in the making. <laughs> we, I mean, we are, we, we are here. It's just that it's a matter of uh, I don't want 
to say they must go look for us. It's up to us. We must go there. Because what motivates me in the morning, I must go there and I must get something new done mm. on a daily basis. I cannot just wake up and it's, it's like uh, normal. It's a normal day to me. I must make... I must change people's life. That's my vision. Even when I employ people, it's not about me. It's about the people that I want to empower. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's, they know all of them. They know that uh, Bravik they always say, right, it's not about us in our company. If we can at least uh, make somebody to have food on the table on that day, I will be happy. He will be happy. They know very well. All of them, they know that this is Bravik. If you want to, to be close with him, please <laughs> just follow what he says. So, because it, the, the struggles uh, taught me a lot, you mm. know, and I know how people are suffering out there. You know, I went through uh, a lot of things, but uh, the, there are some celebration in the end. Okay. Yes. What do you think is the biggest challenge you've had to face growing your business now? Uh, you know, like I said, when I started the business, it was, I started a business in 2004 and five back then. Mm -hmm. And we like, you know, with friends and community around, guys, let's open a business and what, what, what. We go and that, 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 that I don't recommend because um, I've seen. Starting business with friends with and just. friends, yeah, I don't recommend. A person must come and say, Bravik. You know, I have a passion with business. Can we? Mm. You know, don't go and say, Tando, can Let's you come work. and work together? And because what I've realized with most people that I've been involved with, they don't put more effort like you put. I agree, we must put 100% yeah. together. Let's say we are two. We're going to share 50 50 profit, mm, right? The work ethic won't be the same. Exactly. So someone ended telling me, but now, you know, you remember I wasn't into business, Mina. You know, I wasn't into business. You came and asked me that, can you <laughs> register a business? I was like, this guy. You man. forced me into this. Exactly. So when I go to Pretoria Drive to register a company, we must contribute. If we need 200 rent for a petrol, we must contribute half, isn't it? 50 50. So I take it that venture with the friends failed? It didn't work. <laughs> and I went to another one, it didn't work. I went to partnership, it didn't work. It, uh, uh, from 2005, four and five until 2011, I saw six years wasted. I said, no, I can't do this. Let me go alone and see. <laughs> but looking at hindsight, it's not six years wasted, six years of learning. Experience. <laughs> <laughs> but, but then, then I agree, you are thinking. That's what it felt like. Yeah, you, you're thinking I would have made progress, you know, but look, now I've registered. I don't know when I check CIPC, uh, I don't know when, because now we are busy with the registration and what. I had 10 companies that I was involved in, like registering, <laughs> they didn't work. I they didn't work, Ten. I was like, 10 companies. <laughs> I wonder whoever we watch this, how many secret documents, <laughs> registrations do you have under your name that have yeah, that the domain somewhere. I'm telling you, Tando, I was like, no, I'm going alone. 2011, I went alone, and I contributed 200 to go to Pretoria. It's my money. I'm losing alone. Mm -hmm. I lose something, I'm alone. I'm responsible. I'm accountable for that. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to blame anyone mm -hmm. because it's my money. It's my contribution. Mm -hmm. I know what I want. Because once you have people that they don't know what they want, they will push you down. You know, my vision is there. You know, they want to put you down. So I said, no, I'm going alone. So I never looked down. I never looked back as well uh, from 2011. I pushed. I, I, I won't mention numbers. Yeah. But I want to, I'm curious about something. <clears throat> what, what worked for you to not be afraid to go after big projects? Because you're going after multi-million rent projects. What makes you not afraid? Just the courage to go for them in the first place. Uh, I How did you get to that space where you believe in yourself so much that you believe you can just go for any size of a contract? Yeah, I think my dream scares me in, in a way that 
uh, when I look at where I want to be, I feel like what I have now is I'm, I'm, I'm playing, like when I was starting, <laughs> right? Okay. Then I felt like I can handle any project. If you give me a one million project, I'll go all out and see to it that I, I really deliver. Because my dream, where I want to be, I cannot be wasting any time, you know. I need to go there and make sure that I don't disappoint. That's one thing for sure I told myself that if I, if I get a big project, surely I'm going to deliver. I don't know where did I get that belief <laughs> or that strength to say, I don't have anything, but if they give me something big now, I'm going to deliver. deliver. So I had that in my mind to say, you give me five million project, I'm surely deliver. going to deliver. Even if you can see my bank account now, it, mm. there's nothing there, eh? mm. but I'm going to deliver. How? I don't know. And it happened. So it you happened. would get, would they ask for your bank statement then? Or you would just say, I, you don't care about what the bank says, give me work. No, they, they, didn't, they didn't ask about those, those things. Remember, <clears throat> when, when you go, the, the first project that I got, uh, they didn't even ask that. They were like, uh, we need uh, three companies. In fact, the first project that I got, I, I responded to an advert. Mm. They were looking for landscapers, you know. Mm. Uh, and I was like, landscapers? I could do this. No, uh, when I was growing up, I used to work for Mrs. and Mr., mm. where my mother used to clean somewhere in the East End, you know. And that's where I learned landscaping. Because when I got injured, Miss and Mr., they said, Victor, since you are injured, we're not going to employ anybody here. We don't want anyone. We are, pu we are putting pavement in our yard, mm. taking out all the loan and what 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 because you were the best you know because i learned they taught me how to okay how to the, manage everything to manage the landscaping the gardening then it 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 it's it, like to me it was i want to do business with this i want to make money with landscaping is there anything i didn't even know that there are some companies that need some maintenance with landscaping only then when i was because uh, once I'm you got not, injured, you started to yes, go yes. back to the old talent. Yeah, exactly. I went back to the old talent. I'm going back there. I want to see. I'm sitting here. People say, what do you want? You can't do the gardening. Man. And then what? You know, I went, responded to that advert. Got called. They selected three of us. And I was there. And I didn't have money. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have money. I was like... What to do now? How much was the project? Uh, it was 300,000. At that time, and it was a lot of money. Then it yeah, it was some of serious money. money. And yeah. do you remember how much you needed to execute? Uh, I needed about 200K. Yo! Yeah, so my profit margin was about 100. And I needed 200. I needed equipment, you know, uh, you know those uh, lawnmowers, the price cutter, <laughs> all the space you can think of, you know. But I'm you know, very... that would stop many people. They would stop not even go. They would not even go for the job to begin with because they'll say, "How will I get the money to do this job? I'd rather not." Yes, that's where they get eliminated. And <laughs> us who, who are not scared, we go there. You know. So you know what I did there because I didn't even have money. Uh, I said I'll use money from the three F's. Okay. Friends, uh, fools, <laughs> and family. <laughs> yeah. And also, I must go out to the likes of micro and builders. I don't have anything. I'll go there and go ask for credit because I got the, the machines. Yeah. Yeah. I went to builders. I remember I went to uh, the clan builders. I went there, said, hey guys, I need, I've, I've got a project, I need this. said, let's see if you qualify. said, no, you qualify for so much, they gave you machine. I went to, to these companies. And fortunately so, I was able to get the equipment and deliver. The deliver. And I make some calls to friends and said, what project did you get? You will pay our money. said, don't worry. <laughs> it's don't coming. Worry. It's coming. Only if I can get 
money for salaries because that's my biggest worry in each and every project. Mm -hmm. It's not about me. Only if I can get money to pay the staff, I'm done. You're I'm good. done because I'll be waiting now for my payment. But the guys are happy now. I'm and waiting. yours comes in lump sum. So. <laughs> yes, yes. So that's how I manage to. And I've built that relationship with these companies. We will build us. When I go there, they say, here's your credit. Because I paid. I made sure that when I get paid, I went, went there and settled. A uh, lot of companies now, I, I, I've got credit, you know, I, when I need equipment. Mm. Yeah. And I've seen you guys work now. You, you did your succession plan here with the, the men. And so, <laughs> yeah. I'm curious of one last thing. What have you learned about just pivoting? Because your business was going well in one direction, mm -hmm. but you decided to create a different venture within it that goes in a whole other direction. Yeah, no, uh, we are in facilities management where we doing the cleaning, the horticulture, waste management, uh, hygiene, pest control. That's our that's our and main landscaping. Facility. Yeah, so this business uh, we have been doing it uh, quite very well, and contracts were coming and all that. Then remember, COVID came. Yeah. Uh, and when COVID hit, it hit everybody and my friends were like falling like this, closing their <laughs> businesses. And uh, again, I would say by the grace, you know, when you are protected yeah. by the man himself, um, the, the grace upon yeah, no, you. I get you. Yes. So we came to a point where we at the break even break even <laughs> because now the client will say, guys, you need to rotate your staff. Imagine you have 100 staff, now you mm. need to tell 50 to sit at home and will come next week and all that. And these guys, they need to be paid also. Mm. Now we must buy sanitizers that we didn't budget for. Mm. All those requirements for COVID we had to. We didn't budget when we were making our calls today because we didn't know what's going to happen, you know. But fortunately, we're on a break even. We didn't. Mm, it didn't move you to move a lost position. Low. Yes. And that's when I went and sit with the guys at the office to say, guys, you have seen what COVID did. We need now to diversify. You know, we need to diversify and do some other things. And uh, that's when I told them that I think petroleum, because I see the market and I see the gap, you know, because with us, it's, it's where we, we need to to uh, give uh, solutions to people. That's the, the duty of entrepreneurship. You know, you provide solutions when they come with problems. So I was encountering a lot of problems. People, they cry with electricity, you know. I said, I think this is the way. Applied for a license. It took us, I think, two years or so to get a wholesale license. You know, back and forth, the requirements and all that. But uh, eventually, we got to get it. And uh, I said, let's diversify in, on this. Uh, LP gas, diesel, uh, petrol, uh, paraffin, and oils, you know. But I said, we need to, to be smart. We cannot just go, boom. We need to start with one. Then we'll, you know, we follow. Uh, Start with one, learn yeah. the industry, get the connections, Ex get the deals with suppliers, get the customers, and then expand. Exactly. Most importantly, the compliance. You oh, and compliance. the compliance. Yes. And the compliance. Yes, that's what we, we, we were worried about because once we comply with one, then we move to another. So, yeah, now we, we, we are diversifying now, or we have already, we are in already, we are doing this, and the business is really. Uh, doing well, you know. And Last question from me. Who inspires you? Did you say it when you've seen another disabled person doing well, it becomes easier for you to process and realize it's not yet over? For you, who, who were those people that inspired you? Uh, I've got a deaf friend. Mm -hmm. um, when he was narrating a story to me, uh, his name is Nenyo Ombazima. Uh, he was saying, Victor, I got deaf at the age of 10, got the meningitis, then boom, mm. totally, 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 can't mm. hear. That guy, uh, 
despite all the uh, challenges, he made it in life. We are very close, even today he's doing very well, getting the awards from the presidency, from, you know, that guy inspired me to say, if this guy don't even hear anything, you know, in the <laughs> class, I can still hear when Tando giving us lessons. That guy cannot even, he must depend on someone else. And I must sit and say, no, I'm disabled like this. It changed my mindset and say, no, I cannot, I cannot. You know, I have to do this. So he motivated me in such a way that uh, I even went back and thank him to say, you know, uh, seeing your situation at that time when I start meeting you, mm -hmm. and we were like using hands, you know, I was like, no, I don't, I, I, you know, I'm disabled, but I don't want to be disabled. Like, <laughs> we're making jokes. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, mine is better. <laughs> and there's no better disability, honestly, you know? You had yeah. that conversation? Yeah, with him. <laughs> they were laughing. I don't want yours. Mine, mine, is, <laughs> mine is better. Like, he said, no, yours is worse. <laughs> you know, because now you get to use of your disability. <laughs> said, no, yours is worse. You are using a wheelchair. We laughed. It was, it's, it's nice, you know, when you have those conversation so uh, today is doing very 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 well he's here in Albertin and we meet regularly you know and uh, we just when we are together we narrate the things uh, uh, that we went through even with him together when we were like uh, trying to maneuver this life it's not mm -hmm. easy I must tell you but it's doable yeah it's doable as long as you put your mind in it, mm. all things are possible. Do you have books that you recommend? Uh, poor, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that's the one book that motivated me by Robert. You read it back then? Back then, I read it uh, back then. then when I started meeting you and you gave me the <laughs> financial book that how to manage my finance, you know, that's why, uh, you know, uh, in my team, like I was saying this morning, before they use money, they will come with a request. Yeah. My first question will be, what for? What mm. motivates you to want to buy that? Yeah, so each and every... Then you start giving them some financial literacy lessons. Yes, each and every man that must go out must be motivated as to what, based on what, do, can there's some value on using it, you know. We cannot just use, we need to have discipline when we use our money, you know, we need to have discipline. So with me, the question that I was trying to answer you with the succession plan, because I am now making this it's a family thing, mm -hmm. you know, I've realized that I'm now doing a lot of things because I'm like involved in the non-profit organizations that bring back the skills, not the like what I know so that people who are affected, like with my situation or challenges, they can be able to see this, this thing is doable. If I can do this, I can also do that. Is this you know, what you want to be remembered for? It's why it's a legacy that I want to be remembered that, uh, you know, uh, I've managed to assist. If I, I'm, I'm not God, but if I can manage to save one life by just motivating mm. that person to say suicide is not an option. You know, you can do this thing. You know, I was like this, but look at me today. I'm not even ashamed. You know, what? Um, I, I don't hide myself when I go to the mall to say people will see it. I want to be seen that this is, I can do it. I can do this. These things are doable, man. And people must like just uh, uh, accept us and try to understand and as and when we do awarenesses, they will, you know, people, they they used to, yeah, people mm. also, they used to, to, to be scared of me. But once they get close of me, you know, they will attest to say, yo, yeah, you've taught a lot, lot of things. You know, my friends, my colleagues to say, uh, uh, Victor said we mustn't do things like this. We must do, you know, yeah, no, he, he, <laughs> you must ask him first. If you want to make him tea, please ask him first. If you want to do it himself or you will do it, you know, because I, 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 I'm somebody who wants to 
to be involved, you know, to be involved. Like mm. uh, that's why I, I mostly promote that uh, government must do the inclusive. Not to say there we have disabled people, they stay there, then we have able. That's what separates us as a community. But as and when, when you build a school, you must build a school with a mind of disabled people. Mm. To say this school will accommodate people who have a disability. Hospitals, small school for disabled. No, 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 because you are creating now the division amongst the community. So I'm glad the government now is doing that. If you can, there's no new building that will be approved now, without, now, without the uh, parking uh, signs, the bathrooms, uh, which accommodate this. So you know, the, the, our policies, I must say, they are very good. Very good. Very good. The only thing that we lack is implementation. I will pack it there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for hanging us till this time. I pray you have been an inspiration. And I know this will definitely help someone. And I made it for a special friend who was going through a challenge and struggling to process a hearing disability. So I know this will speak to you as well. So share it with a friend who's going through a challenge. Share it with someone who's going through a loss. I know this will encourage them. But from our side in the crew, See you on the next episode. Thank you. <laughs>